accidentally went full glam today. I started doing my makeup and then um, it was bad and so I just kept adding makeup because that's what you do when you mess up. Just keep adding more and more and more until eventually you look like this. Alright, we are reviewing the second half of the second chapter of Clarkson's Farm. Uh, he just got his sheep and so he is introducing some male sheep to the herd right now and uh, yeah, let's get to it. I reckon they can smell them now, Jeremy. Good, well, we'll get that gate open. That wind's blowing that way, they'll follow their noses now. Cougars are desperate. They're actually chasing the men. This is hashtag me too gone mental. Oh, Jeremy. A lot of problems come just before they start lambing. When what they're... problems? So they can get problems with getting enough food in, the right amount of food, the right amount of energy. They've got to stay in the right body condition from now until lambing. What do I do? Ooh, body condition! I love to talk about this, but not really. Mainly because currently I'm going through it with my goats. <clears throat> which is, um, basically body condition is an assessment of how healthy your animals are. So you can do it with your cats, your dogs, your sheep, your goats. Um, and essentially you, for sheep or for ruminants, you're checking to see um, if they're too skinny based on their uh, hip bones and the meat along their spine, like the, the fat along their spine. Um, and that's because when sheep and other ruminants eat, they get big barrel bellies. And when they're pregnant, they get big barrel bellies. And so um, we might look at them and think, oh, that is a very fat goat. That is a very fat sheep. However, um, they might actually be under eating and that's, you know, not super obvious to the human eye. So um, checking body condition is super important. And yeah, that's, that's it. So there we are. I bought a tractor and then had to get a tractor driver. I've got some sheep and now I need a shepherd. Yeah. Eventually I'm going to find something I can do. What should I do with the three unproductive ewes? So this is a tough call. So culling them is hard. Um, I've had to do this with chickens and it doesn't feel good um, because you're essentially taking the life of an animal that, um, you know, should be in its prime, but unfortunately for some reason it's injured or sick um, and it'll have a really bad quality of life. It's, it's hard to do that, even though um, you know it's better in the long run that they don't suffer. It's still hard. Um, so let's see what he does with them. What are we going to do with you three? Oh. Why can't they stay in a little paddock somewhere and with doves and rabbits? That's not the uh, reality, not quite snow white. reality of sheep farming. Ellen. Look at how she's doing that, just whistling. I like that they are showing this with a woman doing the shepherding. Um, because even though Jeremy had said that it, that Amazon wanted as much diversity as possible, um, I still think it's important to show women in these roles because um, very traditionally the farmers that you think of look like Jeremy, Caleb, and Gerald. So it's good to see um, women doing these jobs, especially the tractor and especially this. Ellen was worried my fields didn't have enough grass for 74 pregnant ewes. There's nothing in here. But it's green. Yeah, well, that doesn't mean it's grass. Yeah, so the interesting thing about this is that um, in pasturing, there's actually different ways to measure the amount of edible or, like, food that will actually sustain the sheep or the goats or whatever's eating there. Um, and it is, like, a whole art. How are the sheep? I've taken on a shepherd. Shepherd? Yeah. She's going to come every day and check on them. The sheep enterprise is not looking very profitable. And I had to buy the sheep and the rams. And, and you have to and the sheep handling. fence them and you've got yeah. the sheep handling stuff and yeah. you've got vets bills. So the sheep are going to cost me between... Just Seven and ten thousand a year. 
To have them. Yeah. To cut the grass. That was a bad business choice. Yeah, the unfortunate reality of farming um, is that the margins are super, super thin, and so the sheep are probably barely going to break even. The reason for getting a small flock of sheep, which 75 is a small flock, um, would be more out of passion and caring for the environment than making money. Um, so yeah, it's good that he's doing this, but it's also not great financially. Good thing he has a good safety savings fund because he's Jeremy Clarkson. Alarmingly, the sheep were about to get even more expensive because I still had to finish off their water supply. And now what we needed was to get it to the tank at the top of the hill. The cross-country route to the water tank was extremely hazardous. You could be watching me. I'm I'm watching get shot on the head, so we'd have to put it in the accident book. What accident book? Every farm has an accident book. Who looks at it? The health and safety and stuff like that. Well, why do you just say there's not been any accidents? Because no one believes that. And I've probably got a brood on my elbow. Is that that's, going in the accident that's book? That's going in the accident book as well. So it's a woke accident book. Eventually, we started to... It's definitely not a woke accident book. It's just there for insurance and legal and health and safety purposes. If you have employees that are bleeding all over uh, vegetables that they're harvesting, that's a problem. So, yeah. So this tractor is planting 150 metres of pipe a metre under the surface of the earth. <laughs> you know, the reason I like farming here mm. is I'm sat in that tractor on a summer's day, it's 9 o'clock at night, mm. the light's starting to come on, I can see every single farmer working around the place. Now, like I know I can't speak to them, but it makes me feel good. I just know he's waving back at me and I'm, I'm like a mile and a half away. And you know, I know who it is? I know exactly who it is. Yeah, I know what tractor he's driving, I know what horsepower it is, I know what machine he's got on the back. I love that so much. I just love it. Caleb is describing this sense of community with other farmers, and uh, it just makes my heart so happy. <laughs> it's like one of those shots in Oklahoma. I think he's calling it similar to Oklahoma because it's got wide open spaces. Um, I live in Colorado, which is directly touching Oklahoma, and I can assure you, none of this looks like Oklahoma or Colorado or anything in the American West. Um, however, I think, I am under the impression that the reason why he saw those clouds and thought that is because it looked like that rain was not actually reaching the ground. It looked like it was high up in the sky, which I believe is called, called I think that type of rain is called Virga. And that means it's rain that's high up in the atmosphere and it doesn't actually hit the ground. It's just falling. Um, and we see that a lot over the plains, over the Eastern plains. Anyway, he's looking at that type of cloud and that's what I think he's associating with the American West. We worked into the night to get the pipe to the tank. And then they I just really hope that their tractor GPS is mapping where they put the pipes because uh, if you do have a leak somewhere, it's really important to know where you actually put the pipe because it can be hard to find pipes um, <laughs> if you're just if you know it's in an area and then you're just digging around. Um, yeah. God, farm is complicated. It was about to become upsetting too because the time had come to say goodbye to my three woolly mates. Ones that don't fit the bill have got to go here. Yeah, they've got have, to. Got, I can't, they can't breed. They can't be with a, a flock. And they're not pets? No. Well, I deliberately haven't given them names. Not out loud, anyway. No, 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 no. In the office, we were... It is really hard. Um, I... I know that Jeremy is very flippant about things, but um, seeing him in the car knowing that he's bringing these animals to their death, um, it is so much different than just getting, like, um, you know, a lamb chop at a restaurant. You know, to see the animal that the meat comes from um, versus just buying it in, like, a plastic container where you don't even know what the animal looked like. Jeremy is being very flippant, but he 
definitely is having some emotions over it, so. Went through the endless government paperwork. So that's, it. we've done one form, now there's so, another form. So this form. is your movement license, it's all complete. We keep a copy and send that back off to death for you. This is just it's easier to get into America than you film one of these. It is, you're right, yeah. Yeah, for three sheep, <laughs> it's a lot of paperwork, um, but they want to make sure that you're using best practices um, for food safety, for the safety of the consumers, and yeah. So basically he's selling the sheep to the slaughterhouse and they will slaughter them and sell it to market. Um, so they're probably giving him whatever the market price is, um, but for three sheep it's, again, not the best financial decision to just go take three to the slaughterhouse, do all this paperwork, it's a whole day that you're spending when you could be doing other things. Then there was one last job. I was going to say goodbye to them. Might be a bit late. What? Where have they gone? <laughs> I think they might be dead. <coughs> they're dead already? Yes. Are they really? They've got they're yeah, dead. They're on the, yeah, they're, they're back on the line now, yeah. Sorry. Oh my gosh, I wish they told him, I wish they had told him that he should say goodbye before because um, this is his first time presumably slaughtering sheep and so, um, or selling them to a slaughterhouse, so like, it's going to be hard and I think workers in this industry just, you know, it's, it's a day, a regular day to them, but to Jeremy it's his first time and so he needs that little emotional release and so that's, it's hard, it's sad. There's no closure then. The sheep had been on my farm now for three months. For most of that time they had been a nightmare, but these belligerent, sex-mad illness machines had brought a lot of joy to the farm. And there was one more surprise in store. Hmm. So I wonder if he privately brought them to the the slaughterhouse because clearly now he's eating the meat from his sheep. So I wonder if he didn't sell it to the slaughterhouse to sell it at the market, but instead um, paid them to do it for him to process the animal, and then now he's eating it. They're delicious. Yeah. So there is no difference in flavor between animals that. Um, have been loved versus animals that, um, you know, are just not uh, loved, but it does feel a lot better <laughs> eating an animal that you have raised yourself or that you know the origins of. All right, so that does it for Clarkson's Farm, episode two, chapter two, sheeping. Um, we had some up and down emotional roller coasters here, um, and I do think it's good that the editors left in some of the emotional side of Jeremy. He clearly felt very bad for, uh, you know, very sad and guilty for bringing the sheep to the slaughterhouse, um, you know, and Caleb with his moment of vulnerability where he's talking about how he loves seeing the other farmers. Like, it's just, it is nice to see that instead of just constantly being joking. Um, or constantly being, I don't even know, not a, not a joke, but just silly and um, the way it is in Top Gear. So yes, um, that is it. I will review the next episode soon. Um, I don't really have any way to close this out. That does it. That does it. <laughs> and uh, like and subscribe if you want to learn more about farming and uh, food production and where our food comes from. And thank you.